Hey guys, this is Claudia here from the Bookkeeping Experts. I've been doing this for a long time. And guess what? I absolutely love what I do. And the reason why I love what I do is because when I approach it, I approach it as a puzzle, as something really fun. I love to figure out what's going on. Today we're going to talk about <laughs> a puzzle. We're going to talk about deposits that include more than just one payment. Maybe multiple payments, including multiple checks and maybe some cash involved all together. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that today and I'm excited to share with you a few tips that will help you so that you can discover <laughs> your puzzle and be able to get a hold of your finances. The reason why we keep your books is not or you keep your books should not be just for the fact that you need it at the end of the year. It should be a, a, for a point of reference to know how you're doing with the business and what kind of actions you need to take in order to take it to the next level. Okay, without more, much further ado, here we go, QuickBooks Online. All right, here we go to the sample account. And uh, first of all, I already recorded the payments that will go, um, the sales receipt that will go into the bank, into the bank account. As many of you know, uh, either to enter a sales, re uh, re sales receipt or invoice, we covered that on the past two videos. So if you need to watch that, I'll go ahead and put a link down below. Um, but to record a cash, uh, cash payment uh, it's pretty similar so now keep in mind that whenever you're dealing with cash you need to have a cash account so that um, so that so that you can manage all your cash in and cash out <laughs> okay I'm sorry it's um, okay so here we go plus Neil we're gonna show you how to enter a sales receipt using Patty cash the only thing the only difference really is the fact uh, that here uh, we're going to send it to undeposited funds. No, we're not going to send to undeposited. Instead of sending to undeposited funds, we're going to send the sales receipt payment to Petty Cash because it's going to Petty Cash. There are occasions that um, your Petty Cash sales are coming from a third party app. Okay, if that's the case, then when it hits your account, it should be going to undeposited funds. So you can record that. This one, we're recording as if it's not coming through um, a third party app, it's just being entered in QuickBooks Online. All right, so um, here we have it. We have uh, Bill's Windsurf Shop, and I am going to record a design service, I charge $75. There's no tax because of service. Um, everything looks good here. And he paid me with cash. So that's why I'm depositing. See, I'm recording the deposit. Instead of undeposited funds, I'm deposit, depositing straight to petty cash. And that's okay, because there's only one deposit. It's cash going straight to petty cash. So we're going to go ahead and uh, click on save here. Okay, I wanted to show you on the petty cash account. See, the payment is right here. All right, perfect, right? It's recorded straight into the petty cash account. All right, okay, so now we have a payment. I'm going to show it to you in banking uh, for $200. And this $200 has two sales receipt, I'm sorry, three sales receipt. Two, uh, two was sent to undeposited funds, was paid with credit card or check, whatever it was. And the third one was the one that we deposited in petty cash, but, um, but then it was deposited to the bank. Now, this is how we treat it. So remember that when we record the payments the prior payments that was paid, that were paid, 
with um, with um, ca uh, check. I'm sorry, with checks and with credit uh, with credit card. Uh, we recorded right here, right now. This is if it was paid with a credit card or with a, cre a credit card processing services, other than Intuit or QuickBooks. Because if you receive payments with QuickBooks, it's different because Intuit QuickBooks will generate the sales receipt and the deposit for you. So you don't have to do any of this. So this is if you uh, receive payment from a different processing, credit card processing service other than Square because Square also has integration and it's not integrated with QuickBooks. So you're creating the invoice through, uh, through Quick, QuickBooks, right? Or checks, check payments, right? Okay, so um, we have the two sales receipt that I created for today. See that? Now, the the sum of those two deposits, it's only $125, but on the bank, it was deposited $200. And the reason why it was deposited $200 because $75 out of that money went to petty cash. So this is how you're gonna do. So you're gonna rec uh, record those two sales receipt or invoices payments right <laughs> if if this is the case it would be if it was invoice it would be a payment but it's a sales receipt so we're that's it so send to on deposit funds so we select the two 125 dollars we're off by 75 because one went to petty cash down below where it says add funds to this deposit this is where I am going to record a transfer coming out of petty cash into the bank account. Now, the reason why I'm going to record as a transfer for that $75 is because I already recorded a sale in petty cash. So I don't want to duplicate. So if I if I select sale on the add to this deposit, I'm duplicating that. Uh, that sale and I don't want to do that I don't want any more <laughs> tax liability and I want my numbers to be accurate so that's why we do it okay so here I'm gonna put cash customer I'm gonna create a cash customer oh by the way if you're creating a customer even though it shows the entire page here the only thing you need to actually do is just write down the name of the customer, cash, cash customer. All right, that's the only thing that is required. But of course, if you have all the information like email, but in this case, like I said, it's just a cash customer, I'm not tracking this customer. So I'm just gonna say, and, and this, this payment or this sale was already recorded in the Petty Cash account, right? And where it says account, I am going to select that Petty Cash account. I can actually type here. There you go. There you go. Petty cash. So this will be $75 and I'm adding to this deposit. And when I'm adding to this deposit, I'm taking away from the petty cash account. So you see at the end how it works. So now I have $200. That's exactly. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I always like to work with two, uh, two pages and the reason why is because in one I have my bank deposits here the second one I have my checking um, I always talk to you about if if this looks different to you if this interface lo looks different to you it's probably because you are on the um, business view to change that you just need to click on the top right hand side gear menu Okay, and on the bottom where it says switch to, mine says business view because I am already on the accountant view. You want to click on uh, switch to accountant view. And this will not change anything on your books and you can switch back and forth without any problem. So feel free to change back and forth or um, if you want to keep using business, the business view, um, you may find things a little different, but it's all there. So pretty much the same thing is just located in different places <laughs> all right so enough of that so two hundred dollars august first 
when you're recording a deposit make sure that the amount of the deposit is matching exactly what was deposited in the bank that's why we send two undeposited funds and especially if you have multiple payments like we have on this one you definitely have to record that into on the positive funds so that you can record the deposit for the exact amount that uh, was deposited into banking all right i never recommend to match it to a payment definitely never match a transaction to an invoice it as i have experienced it causes all kinds of trouble so a <laughs> red flag there don't don't match it to an invoice and don't match to a payment always match it to a deposit okay we cover that <laughs> so we have $200 uh, we have our petty cash here and this is going to the right bank account and my date of the deposit is correct exactly uh, what it is here on the bank it could be prior to because sometimes you may deposit a day or two before um, and until it clears the bank, it could be a day or two before or whatever, how many days before until it clears the bank. It's okay. Yes, you can record it for whatever date you actually went and deposited in the bank. But it can never be after the date that you deposit the money because this will create an error on your, um, on your reports. It's going to say unapplied cash payment. And I have another video on the subject. You can watch that. It's easy to fix, but you don't want to make that mistake. So you want to make sure that the date here is for the same date that it was deposited on the bank or prior to, right? Not too prior, <laughs> but within a couple of days or so. All right, everything looks good here. We're going to save and close. and i'm going to the other tab now um when i'm working with two tabs it doesn't automatically uh refresh right so what i do i just click on categorize and then back to for review and hey <laughs> here's my deposit recorded if you want to see the details of the deposit you can click on the 200 dollars, and then you put if you want to make sure that this is the right one you click on the deposit here and it's going to open up that deposit and yes that's right so see our two deposits here and mark now ignore the other ones that I didn't select because this is like I said this is a sample account so there's stuff there <laughs> that we did that so just those two bills bill bills windsurf shop and cool car for fifty dollars so 125 plus 75 yeah this is right okay we can X out of here and everything is good and I match it hooray <laughs> you solved the puzzle now there are so many things that can happen on a deposit that doesn't match in the bank it could be um, tips that were not recorded or sometimes it may be that you recorded the payment on an invoice but that was things that were added to to the invoice and you didn't update that so when you record the payment it doesn't match here now one of the big bigger biggest one is pretty much tips and if you have a third party app a lot of times it's because it's not importing some of the information such as sales tax uh, sometimes it's, it's not uh, updating uh, tips or if it's square for instance sometimes it's because you have a square savings or square um, uh, loan and then you make payments and then it doesn't match when you send the payment here so there are multiple things that can cause a difference but if it is cash and if it is multiple payments that's how you solve it if you have any question you need some help uh, feel free to contact us if you need to catch up with your books we can go ahead and help you catch up with your books. If you need to learn how to catch up or how to catch things like that on a one-on-one -on -one basis, feel free to contact as well. We can do a Zoom meeting where we can teach you step-by-step -step on how to fix, how to find problems like that and how to fix it. Thank you so much for watching. We so much appreciate you supporting us on this channel. We love to help people like you who are trying to 
bring your business to the next level, stay up to date and, and grow. I am so excited every time I hear from you, um, people that were completely lost and now they can understand their books and they can know what's going on with their business. It makes me very happy. <laughs> so if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. And if you want us to cover a certain subject that we haven't covered yet, or even if we cover, if you want us to cover again, right down below, <laughs> we would be happy to come back. Now, I am happy to be here with you. And in just a few days, we'll be back for more. So subscribe so that you can stay up to date. And until next time, keep on smiling.